Well, Flats Class fans, uh, welcome back to the channel. First video I'm doing in 2023. I gotta show off something I got for Christmas here. See that Tarpon Ranch sign right there? Jazzy, my daughter, made that one. Pretty cool. She just finished up welding school. So she uh, she torched that out for me. Pretty, pretty neat. Um, all right, what are we gonna do today? First thing I'm gonna ask you to do, like I do always, go over there and punch that subscribe button while I carry all these cameras up here to my skiff mule. But today I'm gonna drag the Eldora out. I've made my last improvement to the boat. And that improvement is a brand new PowerTech prop. And the PowerTech prop is going to give me my biggest advantage. Because this four blade prop, is going to change the way the boat operates. But I made some other improvements since the last time we did a review on the Hell's Bay Eldora, and I can't wait to show you. So be patient, we're gonna jump in the truck, we're gonna head down to the fish camp. back after uh, test running my prop on my Hell's Bay Eldora and of course I did a little bit of fishing and I'm pretty dirty because of it but just washed her down and got her looking pretty spiffy for tomorrow's charter. Now I spend probably five days a week on the water so uh, when I have a choice I'm always wanting to take my Hell's Bay Eldora. So let me break it down for you. This is the very first hull of the Hell's Bay Eldora. This was our demo four years ago. After it had been in demo service for about a year, about the time COVID had just started up, uh, I needed a boat, so I decided I wanted to try to get an Eldora, but I didn't want to wait for one. So I... I, uh, I had the opportunity to, uh, to take this one on. So pretty cool that it's hull number one. Now the new hulls uh, are the same basic hull, but they've changed some of their standards in the boat now, which makes it better for all of you maybe considering one of these boats. All right, let me give you a tail of the tape first. The overall size of the boat is 16 feet 4 inches long and the beam is 69 inches uh, so it's a small boat it really is now it can take up to three anglers i suggest if you're as big as me it's just two i have taken up to three me and two others but it's better suited 
What can you expect as far as draft or draw? I would say realistically, the catalog says three and a half inches, but I'm gonna say you're probably closer to four, four and a half. But that might be because, well, I'm about 235 pounds, so that could have something to do with it. Uh, the boat itself weighs about 350 pounds, so it's very light. Uh, I can move it around on the trailer, and it comes standard with a galvanized trailer. So you can, you can see the galvanized trailer right there. Now, I'm going to talk about the obvious stuff first, like the aqua traction. All right, my aqua traction has been on this boat a little more than two years now. It hasn't been on as long on the uh, on the professional over there, but on this boat, it's been on here for two years and still looks fantastic because all I clean it with is a citrus cleaner or purple power, and I do it with a really stiff bristle brush, and it takes me about 25 minutes at the end of the day. And I'm gonna tell you, this stuff is a game changer uh, in my opinion, for one reason, and it just makes my boat quieter. You're not going to slip. Your equipment's going to last longer because they're not going to be scraping your reels across the deck. And I got to admit, aesthetically, this stuff looks good. I mean, really good. So let's start here at the back of the boat. I have hardwired a micro anchor. Actually, I had my friend, uh, Billy Henderson Marine Services here in Crystal River do it. And I'm using the power pole spike with it. And I, I can tell you this, you're not gonna be able to get the full length of your power pole. So I cut, if I go wide here, I cut a good two foot off that because I like to have it where it won't impede my push pulling on the polling platform. Uh, it does a really good job, especially in grass and mud, the micro. The only challenge I have a little bit is sometimes when I'm over rock and I move around on the boat, sometimes I'll lift off the bottom. But other than that, I've been very, very pleased and found out that it's the quietest of all the power pole shallow water anchors. All right, let's talk about the, the Bob's Machine Shop jack plate. This plate is new. This is their ultra light um, jack series. And it's a four inch, you know, offset. So it comes back a little bit. It weighs more than the Atlas plate. Now, if you remember a few years ago, uh, when I first got this boat, I put an Atlas jack plate on here. I'm gonna come clean. I was not satisfied with the performance of the Atlas jack plate. A, it would only lift four inches and B, it was slow and it got a little clunky with age. I haven't seen that at all with the Bob's plate. It gives me six inches of lift and it's fast. I mean, it lifts it really quick. And around here on the rocks of the Nature Coast, that's important. So I had my buddy Billy Henderson Marine put that one in for me as well. So I know some of you are going to say, so what horsepower is this motor? Because I took the stickers off. Well, I took the stickers off because I was fishing in an area that I just didn't want everyone to know I had a 25 horsepower. But this is a 25 horsepower Yamaha motor, and it is the perfect balance. This is an electric start uh, motor from, from Yamaha. I do not have the tilt and trim on this unit, so it's a little lighter. This was the original 25 that came um, with the boat when it had a CMC tilt and trim. But because I took that off and opted for the jack plate, I have to do it manually. When I get the opportunity, I promise I'm gonna get the tilt trim. <laughs> <laughs> even if it cost me a half inch of draft because it makes a big difference. Now let's talk about this prop. This is the four blade prop from PowerTech. I have found with the cup, I got a little bit of help on, you know, advice, I should say. Again, from Billy Henderson Marine, he's got some witchcraft stuff that goes on. And with the amount of cup I have in this prop right here and the four blades, I can literally hop up in less than half a boat length and the boat is just, 
it gives me incredible lift and I'm going to show you uh, here in this next clip where you're going to see how shallow this thing runs. I mean it runs extremely shallow, shallow. so that four blade prop absolutely a game changer and then up here I've got the lifeguard lanyard that you can get at hellsbayboatworks.com that is a nice uh, a nice feature and uh, this is one of the carbon marine products this is the the tiller pillar and mine is about 34 inches long because I'm tall but uh definitely need it because I'm standing up running this boat all the time it's electric start but it also has the option to pull start and if you run that battery down because there's not a big alternator in there it really helps you out now let's uh let's move forward now all right i am going to put the decals back on the yamaha don't worry i just i just ordered some so i'm going to get some new decals for it i'm going to buff the whole thing out because i've I'm hard on this boat. This boat is my creek boat. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this little T-bore push-pull holder. You really can't be without one. I mean, so many times it's just nice to be able to just clip that pole in and then jump off after you've micro-pulled down. Uh, some of you may have noticed this little, eh, it kind of looks chintzy, but what it is is it's a rod holder liner. And I've zip tied it on and I put a couple of Shimano bands on there just for aesthetics. But I put my, my fishing rod in this so that when I get up here on the push pole platform, I've got a place to store my rod if I don't store it in the back of my britches, which you guys are used to seeing me do that. So uh, let's, uh, let's talk about the push pole next, actually, because this one's a special one. So my push pole is actually... Or let's just say it started off to be 24 feet long. Um, but my good friend and guy I look up to, Flip Pallet, made me this beautiful um, guava foot for my pole. And for us to put it in there, we had to take a little off the end. So now I'm probably looking at maybe 22 and a half, 23 feet long on the Carbon Marine push pole. And if you want to see how that was done, you should go check out the episode Flip in Season 16 of Flats Class, and you will, you will understand the reference. Uh, one more thing back here. By the way, Joe, who makes this beautiful push pole, there's his contact. He also makes the tiller pillar um, for the throttle of my Yamaha. So great company and even better customer service. All right, let's talk about this cushion. Now this cushion uh, is a recent project. I, I, I just wanted to get a cushion. I needed one for this boat desperately. And they're just a slide in cushion. It's a simple fix. So I called the pros over there at Moose's Automotive and Marine Interiors in Jacksonville, Florida. They're right there on Augustine Road, and they took care of me. I mean, they gave me a super competitive price for this custom cushion, and honestly, they had it to me in seven to 10 days. You talk about customer service. That is what you expect um, when you get something really nice, and they did a fantastic job. I mean, a really good job with this project. It really, and it matches my, uh, my aqua traction. He wanted a sample from Brandon Woods at Aqua Traction Florida. Brandon took it over there. He matched it and voila, it looks great. All right, here's my electronics. It's the Raymarine Axiom Pro 9 inch. This is a hybrid, both touchscreen and you, you've got plenty of buttons over here with the menu button and the home button that you can do it old school if the ride's a little bit rougher that day. Um, but a fantastic, uh, a fantastic tool. I love the size because even when I'm up here on the polling platform, I can look down and I can see uh, my chart, my navigation, and I can see my waypoints and I know what's around the next corner. So uh, uh, it's a big deal to me. Uh, unlike my professional, which has the same unit, this one I did not add a transducer because all I'm interested in is chart on this one. That's it. 
Uh, what else do I have? I have something really cool over here that I really want to show you guys. And this is the Big Drip Lodestone Magnet. So when I have odd jigs and, and plugs and things like that, instead of them laying them on the floor, I can put them right there on my Lodestone. And you can check them out at Big Drip Outdoors. All right, there is one bulkhead hatch in the Hell's Bay Eldora. And what I do here is I just keep my safety gear, my life jackets in here, my, uh, my fuse panels back in there on the left side, my batteries over here on the right. I've got my first aid kit in there and I've got, <laughs> I've got one of my Busby flats here that I keep a pair of Kleins in because we all know if you've been watching me long enough on YouTube, I have a propensity for putting hooks in me, well, and sometimes you. All right, seating. Well, you saw my cushion. That's for my arse, not the client's. The client gets to sit in that chair. That is a Yeti trailblazer. It's a, it's a trail chair uh, that acts like a stadium chair, if you understand what that means. Now, I could put the Hondo camp chair, like many of my contemporaries do, in Hell's Base Gifts that run whip rays or watermans or things like that the problem is is they like to anchor them to the floor this is pretty sturdy on this floor especially with the aqua traction so i really don't need to do that you remember that 25 horsepower i got in the back of this we rarely go over 20 miles an hour i'll talk about the top speed at the end but the fact of the matter is is this is a sturdy chair it doesn't move it really doesn't and then once we arrive where I want to fish, this is how easy it is to break down. I just pinch the two sides, pull the back up, and I set it on one side over there. And then I've got all this room to walk up and down the center of the boat without rocking the boat back and forth. That's pretty nice, it really is. All right, we're gonna talk about the front end of the boat next. This is a Yeti Go Box. It is not a cooler, it's a storage box, cargo box, but it is the perfect height when you look from the deck up there because it gives you the proper step right here to get up to the next level. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I've tried 45 Tundra Yeti Tundras there in that spot. I've tried larger hopper bags and put them in that spot because that floor right there, that elevated floor was built flat for a cooler. But all of them make the step from the deck to the top of that to get up there too long, you know, too big, a, it's too big a movement. It just is too big of a step. Um, so I have settled over time on this go box. And it's kind of nice. It's like having a trunk in your car because inside this box, I typically carry a, some split ring pliers, some, some long needle nose to, to de, you know, de hook something that might be gut hook. I keep some of the sense products in there. You can see a Hell's Bay koozie in there. You can only imagine. I've got this in there and I typically keep some of my camera stuff and then I let the customers put their stuff up here at the very top. There's plenty of pockets to keep wallets and phones and, and car keys and things like that. Uh, I have it strapped down because it was originally built for a cooler. Um, this, this up here is one of, again, Carbon Marine. This is his fish sticks. And I put one on the top just so that it would have some traction. Like I've said, I've tried everything uh, in this spot and I have found that the Go Box works the best. It's not only the right riser height to step to to get to this level, but it also creates enough room for me here that when I pull this pin on this aluminum gas tank, I can slide it out and I can get to the fill without having to untie this. So it's, it's the perfect system. Uh, speaking of that tank, that is not the standard tank that comes with the Eldora or not when I bought this one. Uh, I had a plastic gas can, so I went and got one of these aluminum custom made uh, 10 gallon gas fuel cells uh, at Hell's Bay. And 
then I had my buddy Billy um, put it in for me so that it's on a slide and it has this little locking system right here where you line that pin up right there with that hole and then you can just stick this pin in there and you're done. I've got a cool little tarpon on the front of it but 10 gallons of fuel I literally can do five or six days of fishing before I'm even thinking about it and it just it works in here it gives me plenty of room. On either side of my fuel cell, I can put my throwable, I can put my lines. Usually on that side, I put a towel uh, to, to wipe your feet and then maybe throw a collapsible net. Now let's talk about, since I don't have my cooler here, let's talk about what I've got going on right there in front of my helm grab bar. All right, so I still needed to solve the problem of I have no hard cooler in here. Then Yeti came out with this really badass backpack hopper. And it's about 20 quarts, I'm gonna say, maybe 18 to 20 quarts, which is enough, honestly, uh, for sandwiches, plenty of bottles of water. I put the ice blue Yeti blues in there and they keep them cold all day long. I keep a few extra waters under the tray in that Yeti go box. So this is a Yeti boat. And then I carry a large canteen, one gallon canteen of water with me that I just have sitting in the corner of the boat all day long. So I have adequate for a day of fishing uh, as far as being able to do it. What, what's cool about the backpack cooler and why I don't go with a normal hopper is at the end of the day, I keep a little Velcro strap here to keep it in place so it doesn't slide around, which it doesn't when it's full of water, especially with aqua traction. Um, but at the end of the day, I unhook it and I can pull it out and I can just put it on or over my shoulder and I can walk it back inside uh, my shop and unload it and then fill it for the next day um, when I get up in the morning. So it's, it's nice to have it backpack style. It just makes so much more sense um, when I'm carrying gear around. I can grab more things if this is a backpack. So this has been a nice addition Naturally, I added a little bottle opener on the side. We've been known to celebrate at the end of the day with a few gold soda pops. So that's always a nice feature. You're probably wondering about rod storage next. I'm about to show it to you. So the Eldora comes uh, with rod tubes on both sides or rod holders on both sides. You can accommodate a long nine foot fly rod. I typically take three setups on this side and then I'll take three setups over here uh, that go all the way down underneath the gunnel and then pass my cooler bag back that way. So that gives me the opportunity to take six rod and reel setups that for light tackle. And you can take, you know, you can take a couple of fly rods on either side if you wanted to, at least six fly rods if that's what you thought you wanted to uh, have for the day. I'm gonna be honest with you. Overall performance, I mean, all the Hell's Bays that I've been in, I've had an Estero, I've had Marquesas, I have a professional back there now, which I do love that boat, especially tarpon season and going to Louisiana when I got to make bigger runs. But I have fished more hours in this, hundreds, I mean, when I say hundreds, I'm talking over 400 hours in this boat now, 400 hours in this boat, and I love it. Uh, doesn't weigh anything. I can pull for days on days on days and never get worn out. Never beats me up. Uh, I can get back into some backcountry zones, especially with this new prop that's going to allow me to run even thinner. I mean, I'm running literally in six inches of water with this thing over rock and uh, I can get away with it. You saw that in that little video and all through this, you probably saw a couple of little outtakes of me fishing and whatnot, but uh, you can tell I don't edit this stuff. I just shoot it. I've got, I've got young people for that, or my son does at least. I like to claim that I have them. I really don't have them. He has them. But they know what they're doing, and they make me look damn good sometimes. But overall setup, I mean, it is, it is an amazing little boat for the money. And pound for pound, my favorite Hell's Bay skiff, I have to say. It is absolutely my favorite Hell's Bay skiff. I fish so many places in behind Cedar Key, Swanee, 
uh, here in Ozello and Crystal River, Homosassa, down to Arapica, um, Everglades, it, it just does everything. So if you're a small micro skiff guy and you're really considering something like this, I can tell you right now, two grown men in this boat fishing with a load like I have in it now, full fuel, you're probably going to draft four and a half inches of water um, if you lay it all out in the boat nice and level and you don't have anything too weighted on one side or the other. And you're probably going to be able to run the boat uh, with a four blade prop because a three blade prop is faster. Um, probably around 23 and a half to 24 miles an hour. That's what you're going to get uh, maximum top end speed, which doesn't really matter to me because most of the time I run this boat at 18 or 19 miles an hour. Um, I stand up and drive. It is it is a pleasure. And I, if I had to say one piece of equipment that I'd have to have on this boat every time I'm going to have on all my boats is this aqua traction stuff. It makes a huge difference in comfort, kneeling in the boat, getting fish off, um, just traction so there's no one slipping, skinning their knees, um, falling down. It's It's a game changer. It really is. So you're looking for your next micro skiff. I got to throw my endorsement at the Hell's Bay Eldora. Well, if you like these type of reviews, this type of educational stuff that we do here at Flats Glass YouTube, like I said in the very beginning, I want you to subscribe. I want you to like us. I want you to tell your friends. I've been on the water for 50 years. That's how old I am. And I'll tell you what, I love sharing my passion with all of you. I want to make all of you a great inshore light tackle angler so let's take this ride together all right i gotta i gotta put my boots in the back of the boat and everything else now nets 